Welcome and thank you for joining us. So if you, uh, Mason and Taylor, if you can introduce yourself. So I guess we'll start with you, Taylor, since you're right next to me. Awesome. Hi, my name is Taylor Fisher. I'm the Director of Marketing uh, at Fat Brands for our Fast Casual division. And I'm Mason Wiederhorn. I'm the Chief Brand Officer at Fat Brands. Great. So uh, Mason, we spoke, when we, we both, all three of us spoke, um, you spoke about the history of the co brand uh, partnership. So if you can go into that and also uh, the recent one I think you had in September. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, back in 2013, uh, we had acquired a, a regional wings brand, uh, it's a full service casual dining brand called Buffalo's Cafe based uh, around uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and we were really excited about it and looking for ways where we could expand our product offering with the Fat Burger brand, which is uh, kind of where we started uh, in the early 2000s. Um, and so we looked at the Buffalo's menu and uh, we kind of threw everything against the wall uh, and went ahead with this co-branding idea, which we'd seen a lot of other people in the industry do for years. Um, and it made a lot of sense for us to, to go down that route. And so we looked at the Buffalo's brand and we decided, okay, let's, you know, we started off with some ambitious goals of let's take almost the entire menu and put it in the restaurant. And so we had some colorful exchanges with franchisees who were, <laughs> looking at us like what are you guys on and what is going on over here and so we we quickly kind of realized okay we need to focus on some of the core competencies of the brand and and, and really kind of pare that down um, and so that was back in 2013 and today we've got over a hundred and twenty some odd fat burger and buffaloes express locations uh, in 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 the country and around the world um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that I think as we go through here yeah right so uh, Taylor how do you decide which brands to partner up with, uh, which regions uh, to do this in, and also if this causes any confusion for the customer. Yeah, I think to Mason's point about when we started this, um, we had just acquired a, this wing brand and there was an opportunity to enhance the fat burger menu. Um, so initially I think some of those decisions were made based on just wanting to enhance that fat burger menu, wanting to give our guests some more options within our restaurants and having a brand that had some brand equity behind it. Um, today, as Fat Brands has grown and acquired so many more brands, it's obviously opened up the opportunity to partner with so many other brands. You just heard Shake Shack talk about partnering with Hot Ones, right? We kind of look at that the same way within our own umbrella. Is there a way that we can tap into some of the brands that we have in our portfolio and tap into that brand equity from a consumer standpoint? So you'll see, uh, we'll tease it today. <laughs> We've got our first tri-brand uh, location opening up later this month. Um, which is a great example of how and, and how we make these decisions and when we look at the different brands that we have for Fat Burger, LA is a core market um, and Hot Dog on a Stick was, was created and it started in, in Los Angeles. So we know we've got this like serious brand equity and when you come to menu innovation and you think about, okay, can I add, how do I want to give my guests something else to try? I could add a corn dog, right? Onto our menu and a Fat Burger corn dog would be great because it's a Fat Burger corn dog, but how great would a hot dog on a stick be in our restaurants and having that brand loyalty there um, is, is kind of one of the things that we chat through. Um, as far as regionality goes, obviously we've got franchise partners who are looking to build different markets, so that can play into this. Mm -hmm. um, this specific tri-branded location uh, is in LA, so it was great. We've got an awesome franchise partner opening that location. So is three the max number for you? <laughs> Do you know what the maximum number of brands you can put in one location is yet? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you know, there's an opportunity to look at a lot of different things. We've tossed around all kinds of ideas. Um, Mason could probably chat about some of the fun things that him and I have chatted about after hours around, you know, lots of brands in one place, almost like a food hall kind of thing. You want to chat yeah, about that quickly? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we've, been, we've been looking at it, uh, kind of what the maximum number would be. Uh, I think you know, it kind of boils down to what the format of the location is. I think that's really important when we're talking about how many brands can be in one place. Uh, but, you know, we've had some crazy ideas of can we put every brand <laughs> that's in the portfolio in one facility and kind of figure out how that makes sense. But, you know, what does that mean for the customer experience and how do you make sure you're portraying the brands correctly and, and giving the, the right respect to, to the customer experience that people would expect from a single brand experience and, and something that's much more consistent. So we haven't quite pinned down what the number is. I think mm -hmm. I think uh, a lot of our management team would like us to look at how many we can get in one location, <laughs> um, but we're trying to figure out just as both, you know, brand stewards and, and marketers, how we can do that appropriately and, and make sure that, you know, the customer's experience is taken in mind. So I think there's a, you know, we're trying to figure out where that, what that sweet spot is. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I think three is probably what we're looking at at the most, and there has to be some good, you know, um, cohesion between the brands and the menu offerings in order for that to make sense. Okay, great. Um, 
So we also spoke about your anchor uh, brand strategy. Uh, how do you decide, uh, how did you decide that Fat Burger was the anchor brand and also uh, that they own the data? Also, uh, when marketing more than one brand, um, how, like is it, different, is it different than having a single branded effort? Um, so if you can, Mason, I think sure, yeah, you I spoke can, about that. Yeah, I can talk yeah. about the anchor brand um, mm -hmm. component of it, and then Taylor can, can expand on the, the marketing side of it. But I mean, for you know, for us, we you know we were looking at it, saying, okay, we've got two very unique brands that we're trying to. When we started with Fat Burger and Buffalo's Express, we've got two very unique brands that um, you know we need to figure out how we're going to position it for customers and make sure that, it, that it's a clear uh, experience for them. Uh, and so through some trial and error, because we did go down the path of, you know, trying to do both brands in one space and, and kind of having two identities living side by side in, in one area, um, you know, I think through a couple iterations of the co-branding experience, we landed on this anchor brand strategy for the fast casual brands. Um, and, and what that means for us is that, we, you know, when you experience or you go into a Fat Burger in Buffalo's Express location, you're going into a Fat Burger essentially uh, with, some, with some elements of, of Buffalo's presence so that people can understand where the brand comes from, uh, what, what sort of, you know, history we have with, within, within the chicken wing space and, and whatnot, um, but really leaning into Fat Burger as being the, the main vehicle for it. And as far as kind of how that strategy has been played out from marketing techniques, do you want to? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I think as far as like the anchor brand strategy, I think there's probably a lot of marketers in this room going, and I know we chatted last night at A&W, we were chatting about how you walk into a restaurant and you're going, okay, there's two brands here. Well, I'm sure all the marketers in the room are going, well, what social channels are you using? Mm -hmm. What email list are they a part of? Those are all questions that we've been working through for quite some time. I'll go through the Fat Burger and Buffalo's Express experience first. Um, Buffalo's Express is almost, there's kind of different ways that we approach this, but Buffalo's Express is um, what we would call like a sister brand to the Buffalo's Cafe brand. So we have a full-blown restaurant called Buffalo's Cafe in Atlanta, Georgia. There's a number of them. Um, and Buffalo's Express, to Mason's point earlier, is kind of like a um, dwindled down menu offering that lives within our fat burger system. So when you're looking at a fat burger in Buffalo's Express, there is no Buffalo's Express outside of a fat burger. So there's no standalone Buffalo's Express on its own. So when we think about anchor brands, that's where the fat burger comes in, right? You walk in, you if you're in a fat burger and you sign up for an email program, you are signing up for the fat burger email program. Mm -hmm. You are part of that. You are following fat burger on social channels. I think as we come into this tri-branded experience or as we start to look at um, some of our other potential co-branding options, that is going to shift slightly. And I think that's part of, you know, we as marketers need to pivot all the time. Things are changing daily for us. Um, I think that'll be something that we need to continue to work through. It's, it's obviously something that we're chatting through with this hot dog on a stick. I mean, for example, hot dog on a stick has a loyalty program. Does that live in, in this fat, this tri-branded Fat Burger and Buffalo's Express and hot dog on a stick? In this case, the answer was no. We went with the fat, with the fat burger anchor brand strategy of when you walk into this restaurant, you are walking into a fat burger that offers some of the Buffalo's Express offerings as well as some of the hot dog on a stick offerings. So mm -hmm. it really just depends. But um, I think so, so as we transition into co-branding and tri-branding with some of these brands who do have footprints outside of in a fat burger, they, you know, you can go to a hot dog on a stick standalone location, lots of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we will probably tweak that and continue to play on that. And I think there's actually a huge opportunity from a marketing perspective because to the point of the hot one Shake Shack uh, example, we can do the same thing with our own internal brands and fat burger and hot dog on a stick. Our hot dog on a stick social channels can talk about this new tri-branded location and, and email programs and things like that can also help amplify that message. Um, do you ever see the tri brand becoming one major brand again? Like, um, are you are you just hoping to keep these three separate? I guess what's the future of this? Um, what is what is the future of these co branded partnerships? Um, any challenges that you envision with that? Go ahead. Yeah, I can. Yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, so. A couple of things there. So we've got quite a few different co brands within the fat brands uh, por portfolio brands right now. Um, particular to, or specifically talking about Fat Burger, Buffalo's Express, uh, and Hot Dog on a Stick, we do think that there's probably a lot of legs there. We've gotten quite a bit of franchisee interest in it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as you can imagine, they're looking at it as another product offering, something they can go out, talk to, provide new offering to guests and whatnot. Um, but what we've said, and throughout this whole process for us, you know, we've been iterating with each new store and each new design, trying to work through how that makes sense to, to figure out what really the future of it is. Um, but, you know, part of that is we want to make sure we're doing it right when we're going into this kind of tri-branding space and 
uh, you know, you get into like, are we devaluing the guest experience when we're just, you know, kind of throwing the kitchen sink at them as far as different logos and branding goes and whatnot. So we're really trying to be cognizant of that and how that how that plays into it. Um, you know, we we didn't hit on it yet, but we just actually opened uh, a Johnny Rockets location um, uh, in DC uh, that is co-branded with Hurricane Wings, which is a sister brand of of our Hurricane Grill and Wings uh, casual dining brand in in, in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, there's like a high concentration of it on the East Coast, and so we felt that was a natural pairing, uh, and we've kind of decided that that would be a good you know a good fit for for Johnny Rockets uh, in the space, both visually, it's you know the colors are similar, and that made it a lot easier to to hit on. Um, but from a product offering standpoint, so as far as you know, the challenges with with that going forward. I mean, do you kind of want to hit on that, or do you want me to? Yeah, um, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's part of you know. So you know, part of it is just kind of figuring out what makes the most sense for the anchor brand and and the sister brand, and making sure we're not kind of setting ourselves up to have to unwind some decision we made in terms of going too broad with co-branding and too broad with tri-branding. And so I think that yeah. And I think to just chime in there is is there's also a huge opportunity, right? You open yourself up to, I'll use the Johnny Rockets Hurricane Wings example. Johnny Rockets is traditionally this like old school diners brand. You go, or you go there to enjoy a burger. Our tagline is burger shakes, fries and fun. That is the Johnny Rockets brand as a whole. Um, when you can add in a wing offering, and I'll use the recent uh, location that we opened. It's in a Holiday Inn in Washington, D.C., where you've got travelers who are probably going downstairs to grab a drink at the bar, right? Those travelers might be looking for more of like a sports game. They want to watch a sports game, and this gives you the opportunity to bring that into this brand because a Hurricane Grill and Wings or a Hurricane Wings really allows you to speak to that consumer. So by offering co-branding and tri-branding, you open yourself up to be able to talk to different types of consumers in one venue space and not have it feel on, like it feels very organic when you're there. Mason and yeah. his team do a great job of designing the restaurants so that mm -hmm. it feels like a Johnny Rockets, but then there's also elements of, like he said, Hurricane Wings that kind of fit so naturally in mm -hmm. that it, it there's no it, it doesn't feel confusing when you're standing in those restaurants. We also have great spike shakes at that location. That's true. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I need to I need to try that. I yeah. I, I, I uh, love Johnny Rockets like the 1950s feel like. Yes. I feel like that's <laughs> one of the QSRs that throws it back. So um, so yeah, great. Um, Steve, we. Is it, is it time for uh, Q&A? Actually, before we go to questions, okay. I know that we have some visuals. I'd we have, like, okay. Could, we, could yeah, we walk sorry. through some of the visuals and maybe you could explain a little bit about what you're doing in each so that yeah, we, we can, can we, then then I want to go to your Do questions. You wanna, sure, yeah. I can, okay. <laughs> sorry, I didn't see that before. So the, oh, green, the green button to go forward. Yeah, yeah the, green, the big green button. <laughs> that big green one. Um, awesome. So yeah, so what you're seeing here is uh, is a Fatburger and, and Buffalo's Express location. This is a, a great example of an anchor brand strategy. We've got dual signage on Soffit. Um, uh, there's a dedicated menu panel for Buffalo's Express. Uh, but this feels like a fat burger. This is what we're doing as far as the new locations go. And so a guest that walks in here is going to experience fat burger. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna really get that, uh, you know, the, everything that we offer as a brand. But also there's going to be some messaging about, you know, wing takeaway and what and whatnot. And do you want to talk to me about the yeah. add-on kind of? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think this is a great opportunity to chat through something that we actually recently tested and have seen a lot of success with. Um, we recently, we were talking about how we can strengthen our wing sales in these co-branded locations. We know that they sit at a certain percentage mix within our menu mix, and we wanted to see, can we move that, right? But can we do it in a way that we're not swapping from, oh, I was ordering a fat burger, but instead now I'm going to order wings, because that's not necessarily helpful to check or whatever it might be that we're trying to drive. So we tested doing like a three-piece wing add-on. To, that you're only allowed to buy if you buy a burger, right? Which really pairs, that, that is the true co-branded experience right there, a burger and wings. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually were able to increase our percentage mix by over a percentage and a half, which is no small feat. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big one and it's been a great way to uh, market those two brands together in the space that feels organic and, and really drive some awareness to our wing offerings. Um, do you find that customers now instead of fighting over like, oh, I want a burger and now you want wings, <laughs> now they're coming together to share that experience. So The, the no vote, yeah, right? <laughs> the no co-branding and yeah. tri-branding yeah. is yeah. a great way to win the no vote. <laughs> Especially as we, I know like everybody here is, are looking at drive throughs and we've got quite a few that are mm -hmm. coming up. It's how do we make sure that that entire car can get something that they want when they're pulling into to one, of our, one of our locations. Um, and just real quickly, just talking about some of the wing add-ons and uh, we just wanted to be able to show the hot dog on a stick uh, ex example of the tri-branded location. I mean, we've got the you know the very classic hot dog on a stick stripes present in the restaurant, um, and this location is actually uh, here in Valley Village, uh, or sorry, here in California in Valley Village, and opening in two weeks. So we're pretty excited for for what's to come with that. 
Well, we can go. Anybody have questions uh, they want to pose to them about uh, about the co-branding strategy and its implications for marketing? I've been in the back. Um, Steve, all the way in, in the back. back. Oh, sorry. Hi, thank you, Natalie from Snapchat. I have a question about your marketing strategy um, for the co-branded locations and the messaging that you run and the different audiences that you might have within that marketing. I can take this one. Um, yeah, I think this this is uh, the opportunity that we see with co-branding, right? So if we're talking about a traditional fat burger location, we serve burgers, shakes, fries, onion rings. The onion rings are great, by <laughs> the way. Um, <laughs> uh, when you start to bring in co-branding and try branding, it allows you to, we'll use wings as an example, right? Wings are traditionally a really heavy football uh, offering, right? So it allows us to then target to new consumers through our menu offerings. It also allows us to, <laughs> the third party delivery war, right? Nobody wants to talk about it, but it is a great way to drive top, top line. It allows us to launch a couple of different virtual restaurants. So we <laughs> offer wings on their own on the third party delivery platforms. We offer them with our fat burger offerings. Um, and then we also offer some VRs out the back door. Uh, so it's been an interesting way to be able to tap into a new consumer, not only from like a marketing perspective, but from a direct ordering perspective as well. Thank you. I'll ask a question on loyalty. So, um, I know you guys had some challenges with that. Can you let can you let us the audience know about your loyalty program and how, you know how how you managed that? Yeah, I mean, I think when we spoke, we talked about a lot of. You can define loyalty in different ways, right? Loyalty around a loyalty program, of course, which is probably where everybody's head is at here, but also customer loyalty, right? So you've got consumers that are coming into your restaurant you know, the vast majority of consumers coming into a fat burger are ordering an original fat burger with fries and a drink. That is the vast majority of our consumer. Um, but sometimes you find that that consumer is looking for something new. So I think that offering co-branding offerings is a way to keep that customer coming back. Maybe they're mixing in wings every now and then. The three-piece wing was a great example of that. Um, and as far as loyalty programs go, uh, I think, you know, as we move forward, this anchor brand strategy is going to become key to opening restaurants and deciding what loyalty programs live within our restaurants. We're in lots of conversations right now about how we can streamline partners and, and potentially look at offering multiple loyalty programs in one restaurant. But as of today, we, we really lean into our true anchor brand strategy. Yeah, we, we don't have a loyalty program yeah, for there aren't, right <laughs> We're lucky. <laughs> we don't, I'm not across that bridge just yet. Um, mm -hmm. But we have some other co-branded uh, offerings under the portfolio that have, and they lean into that brand, uh, to the anchor brand. Taylor and Mason, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks.